We're living in a really kind of insane time to be alive, right? With, you know, you see the exponential kind of curve everywhere when talking about um, any sort of technology, you know, computers getting smaller and smaller, and, you know, just thinking about things like you know, we're able to connect immediately with somebody on the other side of the globe and, you know, FaceTime with them. And in a couple of years' time, you know, we're going to be able to interact with somebody through augmented reality, um, you know, in that same sense. And to think about, you know, 50 years ago, that was completely unimaginable. Uh, it's, it's very clear if you kind of take a step back that we're living in a really fascinating time. And the paradigms that we have um, about, about institutions and about trust um, and about connectivity, uh, are not going to are not going to um, be aligned with how quickly the technology is moving, uh, and I think that blockchain and Ethereum especially um, are a really important uh, piece in sort of this really rapid technological development because not only is it um, a technology that is you know uh, when you look at kind of like the math and um, the, the actual technical pieces are it's really quite novel. Actually, sort of the, the theories behind it, like the economic thought, um, you know, is, is something that is completely kind of paradigm shifting um, and bringing a lot of people to the table uh, who sort of understand how, how systems um, are going to be changed dramatically um, by globalization and rapidly shifting technology. Um, and even, I think, kind of the human uh, psychology uh, and kind of how we interact with people and understand like who our neighbors are and, and kind of how we can trust and operate in economic and political systems. I see almost, so you mentioned kind of like two ways, I see almost three ways that like blockchain and Ethereum is going to kind of come to be inundated in our lives. Um, you know, yes, I think it's, it is possible for the community to educate folks on what this is um, and, and kind of what it could mean for um, individuals and, and kind of like creating values and creating their own um, like economies and, and things like that, um, like around crowdfunding um, and kind of community formation and identity and reputation. Uh, I think that it is a good kind of way to go with education, but I think you need to step outside of um, the technical sphere, step outside of the crypto sphere and even the computer science sphere and really embrace um, you know communities that have been doing a lot of this work without this technology, uh, you know, education, you know, from, uh, I mean, I'm a little biased because I come from the social sciences, but I think that, um, yeah, the social sciences and uh, even under other industries such as um, yeah, like the energy industry or the healthcare industry and kind of just, or even like design professionals kind of coming at it from a lot of different places is, is one way you can educate folks. Um, I mean, I also think that, like you said, there could be some some product or something that kind of comes out of the woodwork that uh, is the um, it's the killer app, so to speak, and it's just you know something that immediately provides value to people's lives, and you know through that app they become you know an adopter or, or a user and kind of educated about Ethereum or about blockchain to some extent. Um, the third way that I see blockchain uh, becoming a part of the future is kind of like the boring way, like the infrastructure level way. Um, and you know, despite all of my philosophical leanings, I think that like this third one might be um, the most realistic. <laughs> uh, I think that you know, much like. The way that the internet works, right? Um, people don't know 
about what TCPIP means. You say that to the average person, you, know, you ask them, how does the internet work? Nobody really knows. Um, I think it's possible that the, you know, the big blockchain revolution could really just be, you know, happening at this like technical level down here where like the pipes get switched out <laughs> and your average person doesn't really understand it or care to understand it. And maybe there's these, these like, you know, higher level applications and benefits and, you know, peer-to-peer, you, know, -peer, uh, you know, marketplaces and, and economies kind of shift in ways because of blockchain, but like people don't really understand why. Um, or it could be around something like um, the energy industry and the transition of the grid. Um, I think that is a really fascinating use case that I've been thinking a lot about recently. There's a, a couple of different ways that people are looking at um, the application of blockchain in um, the energy grid or in energy markets specifically. Um, but the general, the general um, concept is that um, like the electrical grid is something is is the system of the electrical grid is something that's really hard to um, like kind of granularize like all of the different movements of electricity um, and and to kind of have a big comprehensive system that's really uh, saying that that's reflecting accurately like the, the load of electricity kind of on a, a, on a, a, a large scale um, and that is reflecting back accurate data about um, you know, how much energy this building might be using versus this building. And when there's different like demands for electricity during the day, because people are using energy less or more, how that demand is balanced with um, the, the actual pr the producers of electricity. Um, it's, it's a very sort of antiquated old system. Uh, and that's partly because of the way that electricity kind of just like flows like water on the grid. It's just it's there. Um, and blockchain, is really exciting to some people working in the energy industry. I think it's a little early um, because it it provides a way, kind of with smart contracts and and microtransactions, to be able to uh, have uh, a single source of truth of you know actually like measuring electrons and where they are on the grid and um, being able to kind of have um, digital assets like related to. The flow of electricity that um, can be, you know, traded in, and you can have like electricity markets using blockchain in a way that's much more granular and accurate. Um, but also, kind of having ways, almost in an IoT sense, of um, of tracking efficiency. Uh, of, and there's a lot of money to be saved, and it's 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 really if if we can figure out how to do like the blockchain like electrical grid right. Um, especially with the the transition of the grid is kind of what they call it in in the uh, the energy industry. But essentially, what that means is we have to we have to transition from fossil fuels right to renewables, and solar is a really um, you know a big piece of that. And um, so there's a lot of really interesting thinkers uh, out there that are projecting that in this transition towards sort of solar and being able to track, you know, prosumers and consumers of people who are producing their own electricity right on their own solar panels on the roof of their house and, you know, transacting with their local, uh, you know, utility company to kind of sell that back and like manage it and, you know, ideas about peer-to-peer, -peer, like, can you sell to your neighbor, you know, electricity. Um, things that the, the um, advancement of like solar technology uh, and um, the transition from a grid that is primarily, um, you know, fossil fuels to one that's more renewable is coming at a really interesting time for this kind of blockchain energy idea.